My name is Senator Omar Fateh. Uh, I represent District 62 in South Minneapolis, and I'm excited to announce today uh, that I'm running for mayor of Minneapolis. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a senator, husband, renter, son of Somali immigrants, and a longtime advocate for working people. I'm running for mayor to work with you to make Minneapolis the prosperous and welcoming city we know that it can be. Yes. For working people, it's getting harder and harder to build their lives here in Minneapolis, and our mayor and the status quo are failing them. We deserve leadership that makes it so people want to continue to live here, raise their families here, and create businesses here. I'm committed to building a city that works for everybody. Serving in the Minnesota Senate, I've seen firsthand what a progressive legislator can do with the right executive. And as mayor, I'll work with the Progressive City Council to achieve real wins for our neighbors and uplift those who are struggling to get by. As you've heard today, I've worked on and supported a range of issues at the Capitol that directly meet the needs of people in our communities, mm -hmm. such as funding free college for tens of thousands of students here in Minnesota, securing a statewide livable wage and worker protections for our rideshare drivers, mm -hmm. supporting and securing investment of $19 million in, uh, for public safety here in Minneapolis, mm -hmm. saving the 2040 plan to make sure we are building more affordable housing, mm -hmm. and ensuring a cleaner environment for all of us yeah. with a 100% clean energy bill. Yes. Yes. Now I'm ready to bring that leadership right here to City Hall. That's right. yes. I'm running for mayor because our community, the people standing behind me today, make Minneapolis the city that we love. And just like the folks standing behind me, Minneapolis is full of people who are ready to invest in the long-term solutions that will bring security and stability to all of our communities. Minneapolis residents are working hard for the city that they love, and they deserve a mayor that works as hard as they do. Thank you so much. I appreciate all of you for taking the time today. Uh, I'll accept three questions because we have a packed calendar. And uh, just thank you so much for everyone being here. And I'll start with you. Go ahead. Do you mind expanding on your leadership role in the Senate, your chair positions, and how you use that to legislate? Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, so I am currently uh, the chair of the Higher Education Committee. And I am the vice chair of the Human Services Committee. Um, and with that, I went into the mindset uh, last uh, biennium that we need to put our students first in higher ed. Uh, historically, uh, in that committee, uh, we've just done things like f uh, fund O&M operations and maintenance, and we called it a day for our colleges and universities. What we saw was that A, uh, tuition has been skyrocketing and we weren't making colleges accessible for all of our students, and B, we were seeing that uh, enrollment has been declining for over a decade, uh, which has led to result in uh, our institutions suffering and our students suffering. Uh, so what we did is we got to work. Um, I remember in the first three sessions, the first three committee hearings, uh, the first day we had, I believe, uh, uh, we heard a hearing from faculty and staff members. Second, we heard from administrators. But in our, the last hearing, I believe, we had a student day, which never happened before. We heard directly from students about the needs that they, uh, that, uh, they wanted us to hear and, uh, and act on. Um, yes, we got the tuition-free uh, North Star Promise uh, Act uh, passed and accomplished that benefited tens of thousands of students. Uh, but we got a lot of great stuff around that as well, such as the Student Parent Initiative that helps students that are parents or expected parents uh, we uh, expanded the grants for ending campus hunger uh, so we could put food pantries on every, on every campus. We ex expanded funding for mental health services for students so that they can get help 24-7 on all of our campuses. We, did all, we, uh, we acted on a whole range of issues to deal with the mind, with the bellies, and to make sure students can just focus on being students, and I was really proud of that. So thank you so much for your questions. Senator, um, yes. you, you mentioned both in your campaign video and, and here several speakers mentioned public safety and you know you could look at that there are, there are settlement agreements and, and lots of you know things that are already in motion in this issue. I'm just curious, how would you handle 
handle those issues differently than the mayor or the current administration Absolutely. is handling? Thank you so much. Um, I guess the question is how would I handle it differently uh, if I was mayor? Well, at the Capitol, uh, there's a lot of disagreement on how we can tackle things like public safety, things like public uh, police accountability. But we don't let the difficult uh, tasks at hand uh, just have everyone throw up their hands in the air and say we can't get anything done, we're not going to get anything done. So that's why we worked hard together from folks from greater Minnesota, from the suburbs, from the urban core. We got together and said, what can we do to represent all of our communities and not sacrifice our values, but bring ourselves toge together to represent all of our values. And we were able to pass $300 million statewide in public safety aid, which was really impactful because it took listening to community, it took listening to all of our districts, it took listening to everybody. And as a result of that, for example, we got $19 million in public safety aid, I believe that Stacy spoke about earlier, uh, right here, that has gone untouched until now, right? Um, to me, that's a travesty. So to answer your question, we gotta listen to community, we gotta handle the difficult situations, and we gotta act, because it's been, what, four years now since the murder and torture, going on five years, uh, 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 the murder and torture, torture and murder of George Floyd, that happened in my district, and what, what has resulted after that? Nothing really changed. We need real action, we need meaningful action, and our, dis and our, 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 our city um, deserves better. And as a mayor, I'll act on that. Senator, uh, as mayor, how would you address the shortages of the Minneapolis Police Department and in the history of that department as well? Thank you so much. Uh, and the question was in regards to uh, the shortages at the Minneapolis Police Department and how we can address that. Um, I've spoken to many police officers myself, and I've also went on a ride along to see and experience what they go through uh, day in and day out. Uh, and in my conversations, I learned a lot myself. But one of the things that I've seen is that uh, from the top, there's just straight up a failed strategy that is happening. Uh, yes, we, yes, uh, we are able to, what, what I saw in that, for example, was there was ready and willing BCR responses uh, that were accessible, and they did show up. But in a lot of those responses, we had way too many officers showing up when someone, for example, was in uh, a mental health crisis. Um, to me, uh, when we, people talk about sh staffing shortages, we also got to talk about what is the strategy? How do we place people uh, in, uh, in times of need uh, in the right place? Mm -hmm. So when people call 911, mm -hmm. we deserve uh, the right, risk, the right uh, approach, the right response at the right time. We've heard too many times people talking about, in my district specifically, I call 911, no one's showing up. Why is that happening? Mm -hmm. uh, and by the way, they weren't speaking about it in the context of, hey, I'm upset. What's going on here? They were talking about it in the context of, yes, yeah, someone's breaking into my car, but if grandma across the street's having a heart attack, what's gonna happen to her? What's gonna happen to her? So we need an approach that speaks to everybody. Well, we deserve a public safety system uh, that works for all of us. And by the way, that $19 million was also was supposed to fund alternatives to policing, right? We can, we can address uh, uh, mental health, we can address the crime that's happening in our city, but we can also address the root causes of the issue that's happening in our city. Mm -hmm. right. So no one's talking about that. Myself, I was proud about uh, expanding, for example, the Team Teamworks bill at the, Minneapolis, at, the, at the Capitol that will support our public park system uh, to hire more youth in the summertime, get them engaged. So when we talk about public, saf public safety, we gotta take a holistic approach and not just talk about are we staffing or are we not. There's a whole lot of issues that are going on uh, that address us. So thank you so much.